Chat. Senators are currently discussing suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton's fate in Texas politics. When we could know what happens next. Well, the majority of us already have a little bit of rain in the bucket, and there's more ahead for the weekend. Tomming out the weekend storms in your first winning forecast. And auto workers are now on strike after failing to reach a new contract deadline. How the strike impacts you and the campaign trail. The Senate impeachment trial of suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton has come to a close. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Mike Rush. And I'm Jennifer Sanders. Jurors are now deliberating behind closed doors whether to remove Paxton from office. A verdict could come at any time. Ryan Chandler is waiting word at the Texas Capitol. He joins us now live with the latest. Hey, Ryan, what's going on there? Well, good evening. As the trial came to a close this morning, Republican House members prosecuting the case against Paxton asked the jury to appeal themselves to a sense of duty, of public service, asking them to find that Ken Paxton violated his oath of office in service, in service to himself and to a wealthy donor. During some impassioned closing arguments, Paxton's former deputies watched on, hoping that the senators would find their testimony compelling because they were the first ones to out Paxton for what they believed was bribery and abuse of office. Delivering the final word was a Republican from Paxton's home district, who he says he considered Paxton a mentor and a friend before hearing the allegations that he served himself more than the citizens of Texas. In voting to impeach General Ken Paxton, my dear friend, a political mentor, a brother in Christ, and a once trusted advisor, this has not just been a hard vote, this has been one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do in my life. Now, the defense, meanwhile, was adamant that prosecutors didn't meet the burden of proof. They faced the highest burden of legal evidence in this case, having to prove that Paxton committed these acts beyond a reasonable doubt. They say the evidence is not strong enough to deal the strongest political punishment. I suspect he did some things that you probably didn't like. I get that. I understand that. But that's not the issue. The issue is whether the proof is there that is so convincing that it convinces you beyond a reasonable doubt the same standard of proof that's in a death penalty case. It's not. It's not. It's not. Two words. Two words. Not guilty. Thank you. Now we're going on the sixth hour of deliberation. A verdict could come in two minutes or two days. If they don't reach a verdict by eight o'clock tonight, jurors will go home and come back at nine in the morning. We'll be here to follow all of that. Ryan, thanks. And don't forget that we are live streaming the trial in its entirety, start to finish on KXAN.com. Just click KXAN Live under the Watch tab. Okay, so it is Friday night. We know that Friday night football is taking mm -hmm. place, but we have some showers maybe coming in. Yeah, we're really going to watch the timing of this okay. because it, it's not quite as early as what we had yesterday at this time. So maybe we get a little bit more overnight activity as we transition into the start of the weekend. Let me take you outside now to kind of put this into perspective here. Whoop! <laughs> We do have our Bar <laughs> that's okay. Get out of here. Our Barrens Creek Vineyards camera there in Fredericksburg kind of showing me a little bit of the cirrus clouds. This camera looks a whole lot different than it did 24 hours ago. Remember when this was lighting up with lightning, heavy rain, and strong winds? We are nice and quiet at the hour. I mean, it's a clean radar, but. I think there's still the opportunity for some of the storms that are going to develop toward north and west that hold together long enough to reach us. So I'm not going to totally drop our rain chances down to nothing yet. I'm not convinced. I think there's still the opportunity tonight and a better opportunity for tomorrow. Temperatures right now in those 80s for the most part. The morning rain and cloud cover we had most of the day keeping numbers a little bit cooler. We're going to stick with these 80s here for the next, I would say, couple of hours and the 70s will take over. So again, that 30-40% chance of storms and showers 
could potentially impact some of the Friday Night Lights high school football games that we've got planned for tonight. But I will be here tracking that and let you know of any concerns. It's real tricky with the timing here. We're, we're seeing some conflicting data. So I'm going to show you what I have uh, to show you. And, and we're kind of going to work this through together because it'll be hit, hit and miss for the weekend, but not all weekend will we be tracking rain. We've got hotter and drier weather on the way. So we'll talk a lot more about it the next time I see you. All right, Kristen, thanks. The trial of an Austin police officer charged with murder will take place in Travis County. A judge denied a change of venue motion today. Officer Christopher Taylor is accused of murdering Michael Ramos during a confrontation with police in a South Austin apartment complex parking lot that was in April of 2020. Jury selection was ahead of Memorial Day weekend and some holdups with jury selection stem from jurors availability. In July, Taylor's attorneys filed a motion to request a change of venue, claiming the case is too widely known locally for an impartial jury to be selected. Our Brianna Hollis will tell us how often those types of requests are issued ahead on KXN News at 6 o'clock. The last three defendants to stand trial on charges connected to a 2020 plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer were found not guilty on all counts today. Twin brothers William Knoll and Michael Knoll and Eric Molitor were found not guilty of providing support for a terrorist act and a weapons charge. All three men broke down in tears after that verdict was read in open court. They they were accused of supporting leaders of the plan by participating in military style drills and traveling to see Whitmer's vacation home in northern Michigan. And they said that they had taken part in some weapons drills, but broke away from the group when they started talking about getting explosives. Nine others charged in connection to the plot have been convicted on state or federal charges. As auto workers hit the picket line, President Biden reaffirmed his commitment to union workers. The UAW strike could have a major impact on the economy and the 2024 election. And as NBC's Alice Barr tells us, the president and his Republican rivals have already taken sides. From the picket line to the halls of Congress and the White House, United Auto Workers' demands are echoing loud and clear in Washington. No one wants a strike, but I respect workers' right to use their options under the collective bargaining system. It's a delicate balance for the self-described most pro-union president in American history. I'm proud to say union. I'm proud. Looking to take a stand for workers' rights while acknowledging the deeply damaging effects an extended strike would have on the economy. President Biden pointing to automakers' record profits over the past decade. Those record profits have not been shared fairly, in my view, with those workers. Michigan Senator Gary Peters joined striking workers in the Detroit suburbs as they try to reclaim some of their power from the heyday 1960s. The average CEO made 30 times what the average worker makes in this country. Right now you have CEOs that make several hundred times what the average worker makes. President Biden sending acting Labor Secretary Julie Su and senior advisor Gene Sperling to Detroit to help facilitate a deal, knowing the stakes in the must-win state of Michigan as he seeks a second term in the White House. Republican presidential candidates already seizing on the upheaval. We're seeing the, the UAW uh, fight for more benefits and less hours working, more pay and fewer days on the job. Sharp dividing lines. We put blood, sweat, and tears on these lines. As workers and their supporters seek wages they can build a life on without dealing a severe blow to their employers and the broader economy. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. This weekend on Meet the Press, former President Donald Trump sits down exclusively with the first black journalist to moderate the Sunday public affairs program and the only second woman to ever moderate the show, Kristen Welker. Now it's Trump's first network interview since leaving office and Kristen's first show. They'll dig into many topics, including foreign relations, abortion, and his indictments. That same invitation to sit down with Kristen has been extended to President Joe Biden. You can catch Kristen's full interview with former President Donald Trump. Trump this Sunday on Meet the Press. Still ahead, a new, more convenient way to get medical care at the airport and how it helps EMS staffing in other parts of the city too. And why Williamson County is now adding more emergency dispatchers and how you can become one straight ahead. 
If you need medical care at the airport, EMS personnel can help you without making you leave the terminal. Austin Travis County EMS has had a team staged past security at AUS for about six months now. Now before this program started, if someone needed medical help at the airport, EMS would typically have to send an ambulance. In the past three months, ATC EMS says it's helped about 450 patients at the airport. So that means about 450 times EMS could administer medical care without tying up ambulance help. But now because we have uh, paramedics in the airport, they're more available uh, to run uh, you know, requests out in the county and in Southeast Austin. And if airport medics determine a patient needs more serious medical care, they of course still take them to the hospital. The agency is still in the process of building its mini station inside the airport. So that should be done quote soon. And of course, we'll update you when it's up and running. Williamson County is now hiring dispatchers for next year. Eight dispatchers are needed. To qualify, you have to be at least 18 years old with a high school diploma or the equivalent education. You do not need to be licensed to apply. Williamson County says last year it added 12 positions because of the growth in the county. Applications close on September the 27th. Well, if you can't tell by the ridiculously loud music here, football is on the docket. Week four of high school action. We got the Battle of the Bell. We're previewing Westwood and Round Rock coming up next. And looking at some of the preliminary numbers here because we had some of the cloud in morning rain. I think we're still looking at one or two degrees warmer. Currently sitting at 88. So, so far we've seen a high of 87 at Camp Mabry. You'll notice the Austin Bergstrom Airport clocked in 90. Picked up about 22 hundredths of an inch of rain yesterday. So well below average as we get into the month and for the year. Hoping for a little bit more improvement in the days to come. We'll talk more about it the next time I see you. Well, storms last night pushed a lot of the high school football games back, one even postponed, but it looks like we'll get some of those games in on time tonight, including the great rivalry in Round Rock. Noah Gross joins us ahead of the Battle of the Bell. Hey, Noah. Hey, Mike. Well, if I didn't know any better and legal was not an issue, we'd be just playing some Meek Mill. I wouldn't even be saying anything, but we do have some football on the, on the docket tonight. And what a big one. You talked about those storms last night. We had a great game on KBVO between Lampasas and Connolly going down to the wire, hoping for a similar one tonight between Round Rock and Westwood here at Kelly Reeves Athletic Complex. Let's get some of the video. These two teams have played, obviously, for a long time, and it's been Round Rock that's really dominated things as of late. I believe you're seeing a crazy interception from last year's game. Round Rock has won every year since back in 2017. Westwood trying to reverse that trend this year. And if the early season is any indicator, things are definitely trending in the right direction for the Warriors. They are 3-0. and Round Rock 0-3 so far. The Dragons have faced three very good teams, including a, a close one last a, a couple weeks ago that made them 0-3. So they're hoping to get their first win of the season here in the district opener. A very big game with both these teams. The history involved. They are one is orange, one is red for Texas and Texas A&M. So there's emotion, there's a rivalry. It's friendly largely. We're excited for this one. A lot of games in the area. Guys, as far as the storms, it seems like a beautiful night here, a little warm. The one thing I want to ask Kristen about, I don't know if this is a weather thing, is last night at the game, it might be because of the storms, there was crickets or cicadas flying from the sky and hitting me unbelievable in an unbelievable amount. I don't know if that's a weather thing regardless, but as we can tag out here, football today will have more at 10. Kristen, now if you can answer. Uh, Noah, that's a Texas thing, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny you, you actually bring that up because we have a reporter working mm -hmm. on that. Grace Reader. Mm -hmm. Grace Reader is digging into the details about why all of a sudden we're seeing the crickets around. There, no. I think there is a little bit of a weather component, but they also, you know, share Texas as a home just like we mm. do. Well, just the fact that they were going at him so much, that sounds like a Noah thing kind <laughs> yeah. of to me, but that's yeah, a different right. story to Personal tell. Problem, but no, I've seen him around, of course, too. So let me show you what we've got going on with your forecast here, because you'll notice right now we're dry. I mean, yeah, we're out where Noah is, we're seeing plenty of blue sky, but there's still some storms that might approach us. So I'm not letting my guard down yet. I think there is that opportunity 
we're going to be uh, looking at some more rain, but also having to dodge some more storms here as we get into the later part of this evening. We're watching the stationary front to the south of us. You can see behind it, we've got the 80s and 90s out ahead of it. Hot still 90s to low 100s there down in South Texas. Currently standing at 88 degrees uh, in downtown Austin and Liberty Hill 83. Here's that blue sky that I'm talking about. What will see landscape supplies weather camera giving us that view there. As far as tonight goes, the Storm Prediction Center has still included us in that marginal risk. That's a one out of five concern of seeing maybe some hail and gusty winds similar to what we had last night. But when it comes to the timing of this and even the confidence of it, I, I'm not certain we're going to see as much as what we had 24 hours ago. I think it might be on the lighter side tonight, but I'm not going to completely say everybody will be dry either. I think there is that opportunity for a few of these storms to kind of sneak in, whether that's to the south or to the west, will be something I will be tracking in the Weather Center all night. Once we get into tomorrow, I'm fairly confident in a round of storms coming in for the morning. So if you've got Saturday morning plans anywhere from about maybe 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., watch the skies because some of these storms will be coming in along a front here that's likely to move into the I-35 corridor late morning into the early afternoon hours and then continue to push into our eastern counties thereafter. I'm seeing a little bit more confidence that maybe we see just a few isolated showers left over on Saturday night, but the majority of the rain actually comes during the day. So tomorrow still a good 50 to 60 percent chance of storms, but that's largely going to be before 7 p.m. Your Saturday night plans at this point looking a little bit more successful. Sunday actually is trending even drier. There are only a 20 to 30 percent chance of some spot showers. So your weekend weather plan are showing Saturday still on the uh, on the lookout for some of the scattered storm activity with the frequent lightning, the heavy rain causing some localized flooding. Not going to completely rule out those strong winds and hail either. Yesterday, that severe weather threat kind of overachieved, had a couple instances of damaging wind. Sunday, again, spot shower, but a little hotter as we see drier skies. So here is your high school football forecast for tonight, keeping in that low chance of a few storms. Temperatures out there going to be fantastic. I mean, 80s to start, 80s to finish here. This makes it look a little bit scarier than I think it will in person. Again, these are hit and miss storms, not widespread. Looking at the potential of rainfall accumulation, because we only have meaningful rain chances within the next 48 hours, this will likely come within the next two days, and that's about a quarter of an inch to an inch in addition to everything we've picked up already. And again, if you're looking for those 24-hour rainfall totals, we've got those online at kcn.com. 50% chance of storms for tomorrow. Maybe one or two isolated storms impacting the game. We'll watch it closely as we've got the Longhorns here at home taking on the Wyoming Cowboys. 20% chance of even fewer storms on Sunday. And then you'll notice as the rain chances drop out of the forecast, mixed sun and clouds, hotter temperatures will come back through Monday and into the later part of the week. By the way, Friday, we've finally put an end to this historic summer. Our last day of astronomical summer comes Friday we officially flip into fall next Saturday morning. If only the temperatures flipped right with them. Thanks, Kristen. Still to come, an update on the Austin housing market. What experts are saying is a sign of buyers gaining more confidence. This is the story of a series of murders in Laredo, Texas. Someone was killing women who worked on the streets. And the questions were, who was killing them and why? Tonight on Dateline at 9 on KXAN. A report released by the Austin Board of Realtors claims that an increase in closed sales on homes shows buyer confidence in the Austin Round Rock Metro housing market. Now the area saw a 9% month over month increase in closed sales and homes are also staying on the market 28 days longer than in August of 2022, averaging 60 days before sale. A board director and City View Realty owner Brandy Winch says that the housing market is always fluid, but Austin's has remained pretty active. We're seeing buyers get back out into the market, um, having more opportunities to buy and seeing it as a good time to purchase a home while sellers are being a little bit more negotiable in their home prices. And you can read more from our core niece under this story on KXAN.com. Well, the rental market has not seen the same impact. Real estate website Zumper broke down rental rates for the city last month. One bedroom units 
are increasing 0.6% to an average of $1,570 a month, while two-bedroom units fell 1% to just under $2,000 a month. Kyle is the second most expensive market for renters in our area, rent at just under $1,500 a month. And Georgetown rounds out the top three with prices averaging just over $1,400 per month. Well, later tonight on NBC Primetime at 7, it's America's Got Talent, then Dateline at 9 p.m. And after that, KXAN will be back here with your evening news at 10 o'clock. Or join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 on CW Austin. Here's where you can find us.